The figure shows three heat engines. For each engine, calculate delta E, and that's QH minus work out minus QC, where QH is the amount of heat transferred from the hot reservoir, QC is the amount of heat transferred to, to the cold reservoir, and work out is the energy output of the heat engine. QH, work out, and QC are all positive quantities, which if any of the heat engines violates the first law of the thermodynamics, then for each engine calculate the theoretical maximum efficiency, E max, and for each engine calculate the actual efficiency, E, and then which of any violates the second law of, of thermodynamics. So let's go down and do part A real quick. So they want us to know what is delta E, delta E, and they say it's equal to QH minus workout minus QC. So QH minus workout minus QC. So the delta E for A is QH is 50 joules, minus workout is 30 joules, minus QC, which is 20 joules and that gives us zero joules. The delta E for B is 10 joules minus QH minus work, which is four joules minus QC, which is seven joules. Okay, and that gives us negative one joules. Change in energy for C is QH is 30 joules minus work is 10 joules minus QC is 20 joules, so that gives us zero joules. So when you put that in, you will put zero comma negative one comma zero. All right, and that is part A. Okay, so now let's move on to part B, where they ask which of any of these three violates the first law of thermodynamics, which basically says you whatever you put in, we're conserving energy equals what comes out, and we can't have more energy out than we put in. So for, uh, for part B, the one that violates that is engine B. The reason is, is we have 10 joules coming out or of stuff that we're taking out of the engine, but they say that we're getting four that we're doing work and seven going to the the cold. So that's basically 11 joules. So they're saying we're using 10 joules to get out 11 joules, which makes no sense. So that one's gone. All right, part C, they say calculate the maximum efficiency for all of these engines. So for part C, we'll use the equation E max is equal to one minus TC over TH. So let's go back up and look at the TC and TH for all of these. So if you notice, TH is all 600, what I put joules on this last one, 600 Kelvin, and TC is all 300 Kelvin. So we can do this once and the answer will be the same for all of them. So E max is equal to one minus 300 Kelvin over 600 Kelvin, which gives us one minus three over six, which is the same as one half. So we get one minus 0.5, and so we get 0 0.5, or 50% is our theoretical maximum efficiency for all of those. So when you put it in, we'll have zero 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 comma and for engine C 0 0.5 all right moving on so for part D now they want to know what the actual efficiency is going to be so this one kind of gave me some trouble when I was going through it because we know that the actual efficiency of an engine is E is equal to work out over Q H. And so I was thinking, hey, well they give us QH and QC, so 
why can't I just change this to QH, QH minus QC over QH, which would give us what the actual efficiency is, uh, the most accurate. But what they want to know is do any of these violate the, any of the laws of thermodynamics, in this case the second law of thermodynamics. And so in this case we actually need to just use this one. If you use this equation right here it'll tell you you're wrong. You'll be right in the sense that you did actually calculate the actual efficiency of the engine, but they want to know if any of them violate it so we need to use this one. So for engine A, uh, not E, sorry, little e efficiency for engine A is going to be work out, which is, lost my place, work out for A is 30 and QH is 50. So we have 30 joules for work out over 50 joules for QH which gives us 0 0.6 for that actual efficiency. The efficiency for B is going to be 40 or 4 joules for work divided by 10 joules of the QH, which gives us 0 0.4. So this one, let me draw it real fast. If we were to have this, so we have 10 joules for QH, 4 joules out, and 7 going to the cold. If we were to use this equation, the second one, the QH minus QC over QH, we say, hey, we know QH is 10 minus QC, which is 7 joules over QH, which is 10. That's going to give us 3 joules over 10 joules, which will give us an actual efficiency of 0 0.33 or 33%. So this is what the engine's efficiency actually would be, but since we use work, we're getting more work out than we can, so we're getting a higher efficiency than is possible. So let's go down to engine C, which is, E for C is QH is, or work I mean is 10 joules out for work over QH, which is 30 joules and that gives us an efficiency of 0 0.33. Oh, I said this is 33, this is 30, if is what it would be, 0 0.3. Okay, so now for part D, or not part D, sorry, part E, we wanna know which of these breaks the law of, the second law of thermo thermodynamics. So we figured out that the maximum efficiency for all of these engines is 0 0.5 or 50%. So now that we figured out the actual efficiency, if any of those exceeds 50%, that violates the second law of thermodynamics. And for engine A, we got an actual efficiency of 60%. So for part E, the answer is A, engine A.